Goblins of Fire, Book 6, Moon Rising, Chapter 13. Moon, Darcelfa shouted, perhaps more than once, dragging her back to herself. Moon, it's not real. You're all right. She staggered up and caught herself against the rough stone side of the tunnel. What do you mean it's not real? She asked. Her heartbeat was too fast, squeezing her chest so she could barely breathe. I mean, it could have been, but it won't be, he said. Whatever it was, it's in the history kit. Stay away from there, and her vision returned, fiercer and more agonizing than before. Now Moon was outside the history cave, and fire was pouring out into the tunnel, along with the screaming, burning figures of her friends. Tinkatu stumbled to the ground in front of Moon, her wings turning crisp and black as flames. It them away. Vermilion's voice howled in pain from inside, Tamron and Umber lay half in, half out of the cave, gasping as dark smoke filled their lungs. Moon! Moon! Dr. Stalker pulled her out again. Close your eyes. I can take your mind to a safe place where you won't see any of this. No, Moon shouted. Don't do that. She pushed herself up and started running toward the history cave. What are you doing? Dr. Stalker asked. I have to stop it. There isn't time. Can you tell? The explosion is only a few minutes away. Then I have to warn them. Someone might be in there already. A half second pause. Then, is that wise? Don't you want to keep your power a secret? Not if it means my friends will all die, Moon cried. The vision slammed into her again, stamping her to the ground like a giant talon. More fire, another burning dragon, maybe Pike or Big Tail. Umber laying in a charred heap on the ground, Sora sobbing beside him. Kibley with his wings in flames, screaming for help. What's wrong with you? A cool, arrogant voice asked from above her. Is she all right? His brain worried more sympathetically. Winter. Moon shook her head, trying to clear it. The ice wing was not really there. Was really there, standing in front of her. Really not on fire. Not dead. His scales were smooth, pale blue and unburnt. His eyes were arctic pools. Some kind of night wing seizure, he asked, looking down at his snout at her. His tail flipped, and he took a step back toward the history cave. She could see the arcway only a few paces ahead of them, quiet and flame-free. You can't go in there. Moon lunged forward grabbed, and grabbed his forearm in her talons. We're touching. She's, I'm, her scales against mine. I can't want this. This mine world. What are you doing? He barked, but didn't pull away. Please, don't go back in there. She managed. The vision was coming back. Something terrible is going to. Kimberly burning. Tamron burning. Winter safe. Icicle safe. Kinkachu burning. Winter was holding up her up. She'd fallen against him and was trying to lift her back up right. His wings supporting hers. What's something terrible, he said, his voice rising. He shook her. How do you know? Hey, leave her alone, Kibley's voice interjected. Stop, Moon cried, pulling away from Winter and throwing herself in front of Kibley and Turtle. Don't go in. No one can go in. Whoa, calm down, Turtle said gently. You're having some kind of a panic attack. No, please, listen. Moon couldn't catch her breath, not with the visions coming faster and the intensity of the thoughts around her. Tamron dead, Kinkachu sobbing, Carnelian burning. She's losing her mind. Please, please, don't let anyone go in there. Deep breaths, Dark Stalker said softly. You'll be all right. I'm listening, Kibley said, crouching to look into her eyes. We're here. Don't worry. Must be something serious. Look at her eyes. She's terrified. Did Winter do this to her? No. He doesn't know what's going on either. What can I do for her? Find the threat. Neutralize it. She grabbed Turtle's talons and tried to wrap his muffled mind around hers. Kinkachu. I have to stop Kinkachu. The image of the rain wing burning kept coming back over and over, like a knife plunging repeatedly into her heart. She's right behind us, Kibley said. He put one wing around her. Moon, what's happening? Yes, Winter said. What do you know? Moon could feel the footsteps of other dragons through the floor. Dragons were coming for class. How could she stop them? How could she stop all of them? She let out a cry of pain and closed her eyes. Another vision. This time, Peril was there, engulfed in the flames, clutching someone in her talons. Was she the cause of the fire? If Moon could stop Peril, could she save everyone? She couldn't think straight, couldn't focus long enough to come up with a convincing lie or plan or anything. Moon, it's all right. Moon, breathe. Here, lean on me. Warm rainbow wings walked 
wrapped around her. We have to take her to Clay and Sunny. They'll know what to do. Good idea, Tibbly thought. I should have thought of that. Think of you, Moon sighed, leaning into her friend. The walls were fading in and out. The torch lit, flaring, and then disappearing and flickering back. She took a few stumbling steps as Kinkachu tried to guide her up the tunnel. I don't know, when she was saying to someone. She just collapsed. Hey, Carnelian, Kibli called. Don't go in there. Why not? The Skyrim's voice demanded. Uh, he said, one of the torches got all smoky. The whole cave smells. Needs to air up. Well, it's fine to me, Carnelian growled. Come on, Moon, Kinkachu said, tugging her along. We'll go find help. But the cave, Moon said. She shook her head, trying to clear it. Kinkachu's worried thoughts were scattered all through hers, loud and sweet and muddling. Kinkachu wanted so badly to take Moon away from there that Moon couldn't find her way back to what she needed to do. I have to... Don't worry, Kinkachu said. We can miss class today. Tamarin will get us any notes we need. Is she in there? Moon froze. Kibli and Turtle were still beside her. Winter was a step away, watching her intently. Did she go in the history cave? Sure, but... No, she can't. Moon turned in time to see Carnelian at the cave entrance, tossing her head. You are not smart, Sandwing, Carnelian said. It's perfectly fine in there. She stepped into the classroom. No, Moon cried. Farther along the tunnel, Icicle was coming from the other direction. The ice ring stopped and arched her brows as Moon dove for the doorway where Carnelian had disappeared. With a whoosh and a boom, the cave exploded in a huge fireball.